Hi everyone, it's James here from TSR Jivey Talks Tech. Now, as many of you will know, I'm on what I'm calling an immersive audio learning journey. I've got the speakers up and the rig is set up and I have an update on that coming very soon. But for now, I'm starting to do my first Dolby Atmos mixes. And I want to take a track that I worked on with singer-songwriter Natalie Good, a track we called uh, Knocking On Your Door, and turn the stereo mix into an immersive Dolby Atmos mix. And at the moment, it kind of would appear that there are no real hard and fast rules on mixing music in immersive formats. So with the help of my friends Steve Jenowick and Working Class Audio's Matt Boudreau, who are both Dolby Atmos gurus, I'm up and running and making eh, steady progress. However, there are some big gaping holes in the immersive audio toolbox at the moment, where I'm hearing a lot of terms and phrases like, it's a bit of a hack and there's a good workaround for that. But thanks to the team at Waves, we now have a new sonic ally that allows us to use familiar audio production tools in the brave new world of immersive audio. This is the Waves Immersive Wrapper, and it allows the current crop of Waves plugins to perform in an immersive, let's call it a Dolby Atmos workflow. As I've said before, music in Atmos is the audio production equivalent of the wild frontier. So I may say stuff that goes against what others might be saying on the subject. But as yet, the rule book has not been written for Dolby Atmos and music. And even if it did exist, rules were made to be broken, remember? Now, as yet, our YouTube overlords have not made it possible to broadcast Atmos or any other multi-channel or immersive content on their platform. So where I'm hearing the track spaced around me in a luscious soundscape, you're hearing the mix down to stereo, which is happening automatically thanks to the amazing Pro Tools routing shown to me by Matt Boudreau. He has a free course available, so I'll leave a link to the Working Class Audio page down there in the blurb. So if you want to learn how to mix in Atmos and stereo at the same time, do be sure to check that out. So back to the new Waves Immersive Wrapper, which is, simply put, a plugin that allows you to control multiple mono instances of a Waves plugin from a single plugin graphical user interface, GUI. I'm going to load the Waves Immersive Wrapper onto this 9.1.6 folder track, which is the Atmos equivalent of a master bus. But the wrapper is compatible with folder, aux and audio tracks from mono up to immersive 9.1.6 track widths. And I'll load in, in this instance, the SSL G bus compressor. Why this plugin? Well, firstly, of all of the SSL G style bus compressors, I like the Waves one the best. And second, the Waves SSL G master bus compressor has a side chain input which is very handy and is one of the main features of the Waves Immersive Wrapper, as it allows us to do some very complex and very clever multi-channel processing with little effort and without super complicated routing in the Pro Tools I.O. page. Let's take a quick look around. The Waves Immersive Wrapper follows the same preset, load and save format as all Waves plugins. We can load a plugin into the wrapper only one at a time using the load plugin dropdown. Now, we can not only see the plugin GUI, but we also see the control link groups display. This section allows us to apply, in this case, dynamics processing to some or all of our output groups, be that the fronts, the sides, the LFE or low frequency effect, the sub, if you will, or the tops or height speakers. We can apply processing to all of these at the same time, or we can choose to affect the speaker groups differently or not at all. Or we can apply different settings of the same plugin to the different groups, but I'll come back to that shortly. But for now, keeping it simple, I'm going to start by slapping some gentle bus compression across all the outputs, much like you would in a stereo mix. I'll reset the plugin and then select all in yellow. Now, as I tweak the parameters, I'm applying the same compression to all of the channels in my multiple buses. However, Due to the nature of any base management or processing that could be happening to the LFE, I don't want to process this output. So I'm going to select it and hit bypass. Now, audio will still flow through this channel, but it will not be processed. I've also created a control group that 
does not include the LFE. So if I do forget to bypass it and leave the processing active, I'll not make any adjustments to it while working on the other outputs. To the right of the control link groups, we have the sidechain mixer. In this setup, all the groups, the fronts, sides, and tops, are triggering the processor with equal weight, if you like. However, I want the front left and right to drive the compressor a little harder. So in the sidechain mixer number one, I'm just gonna bring these up a tiny bit. I've nudged the side chains up a little bit just to drive the compressor a bit harder and get a bit more of that lovely SSL glue across all the buses. Now, I also want to compress the tops a little bit more to bring out the reverb tails and the drum room sound. So what I can do is select the tops link group and change the ratio to 10 to one and bring down the threshold a little bit to increase the gain reduction. By selecting only the tops group, I'm altering only the processing to the top speakers. The processing to the other speaker groups stays the same. Now there's nothing to stop you adding another instance of the Waves Immersive Wrapper on another insert in the 9.1.6 bus for an EQ or a limiter as I have here. I call this my safety net with an output ceiling setting of minus one dB to stop any intersample peaks. Now I'm not even sure if that's relevant in an Atmos workflow, but call it a hangover from working in stereo. I'm also using the Waves Immersive Wrapper to give me a proper immersive sounding and feeling drum reverb. I've set up a conventional AUX send for my drum reverb, but this time it's feeding a 9.1.6 AUX. And I've put the Immersive Wrapper on it and a copy of Waves H Reverb and set it to a warm chamber. Now, while the main drum close mics are bussed to a stereo bus, which is in turn sent off and primarily coming from the main left and right speakers, the drum room mics are spread around the immersive field, either dead center as the mono room mic is, or set up rear and high as the MS or mid side pair are. The sends from the channels and the bus aux outs feed the immersive reverb to give a very nice full drum sound from the front with the chamber ambience coming from behind, giving you a feeling of being in the drum room, which funnily enough, I really like. The other place I'm using the Waves Immersive Wrapper is on the lead guitar part. Now, this part was recorded with the delays committed to the track, but I feel it feels a bit flat.
Now again, I've created a 9.1.6 aux return channel and put a copy of Wave's H delay inside the wrapper. Now in the Stereo Leadmaster aux send, I've positioned the delays to come out of the mid left and mid right and a little bit about kind of halfway up. This means the delays that are baked into the track will come out of the main left and right, but my new H delays will come out of the sides and a little bit out of the heights. Yes, I know I'm delaying the delays that are already baked into the track, but it kind of works. Now inside H delay, I'm going to turn off the fronts, they're bypassed, and in the surround channels, I'm gonna use a dotted eighth delay, and in the height channels, I'm gonna use a dotted sixth delay and this gives me a really cool sounding multi-delay effect from just one processor. Even though I'm running four instances of the immersive wrapper with its contained plugins, and it's a session of over 100 channels with a fair amount of processing and virtual instruments, all that sort of stuff, my MacBook Pro is really not breaking a sweat, which is fantastic news. So there you go, the new Waves Immersive Wrapper, a way to make all the Waves plugins fully compatible with immersive workflows, which also allows some very cool, creative, and sonically interesting audio outcomes. For me, Waves have turned what could have been thought of as a very quite utilitarian plugin into a very creative tool. So well done, Waves. So really hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do like, subscribe, hit the bell. And if you're looking to buy this or any of the Waves plugins, please do consider using the affiliate links down there in the bio as it really does help keep the lights on, so to speak. But for now, my name's James Ivey from TSR, Jivey Talks Tech, and I'll see you again very soon.